So now we're gonna go over to screen four. Screen four will work the same as screens one, two, and three. So this will be a much shorter video than the first one. We'll, we'll briefly touch on review things that are similar to screen five and we'll talk about what's different. The primary difference is that the server is actually inside of the projector. It's still a separate functioning unit, but it's, it's built in with the projector. And that is called an IMS, Integrated Media System. And we can see right there where it says IMS 2000. So that is a, a Dolby IMS that's actually inside of a Christie projector. So when we refer to the projector, that is still all of this, which we have lamp house, light engine lens, that sends the information, but we don't have cables feeding the video signal from the server to the projector because it's plugged directly into the projector. The only video cables that we have to worry about are for um, on-screen ads and alternative content. So for that, we have our HDMI um, A and B here, which they're actually DVI plugs. Not sure why they labeled them HDMI, but these go to, um, HDMI goes over to your ad player, which on screen four is over here on the sound rack. And then this HDMI in right here actually feeds directly into the server. You'll notice these, any, anything outside of this space, anything above here or below here is not part of the, the IMS or the server. Anything on these two rows of things right here is part of the IMS. So these feed a video signal directly into the projector, which means we will control it from the projector controls. So instead of having the buttons on a side panel, we have the touch screen right here. And so we can actually switch, um, say intermission, we'd switch on right there. That would switch the projector to listening to this channel. In order to listen to the, the DVI audio, the video signal here, uh, which is actually audio and video, that's going to be done from the server controls in a, in a different place. So, on the side here, we have a lot of important things going on. We have our Ethernet cables, which are these two. Um, these give the server connection to the network. Um, the other one, one of them gives, uh, this one gives a connection to the network. This one is actually just plugged into our NOS, which we'll talk about in just a minute. This is a, an eSATA plug, which we gently plug in right here. That goes to our ingest bay. That is how we ingest content. Remember in screen five, the ingest bay was part of the server. On this one, it has to be plugged in separately. And then we have uh, USB ports to plug uh, jump drives in if we need to transfer keys manually. And then this over here looks like a network cable. It is a network cable, but it's on this AES out. That's actually an audio cable. So that's gonna come down here to our Fidelio. And then we come out of the Fidelio over to our CP750. And that is how the sound is gonna get um, from the server out to the CP750 and ultimately to the speakers. And then, um, talked about our access link. There's our access link for screen four, tucked in nicely up here on the front of the projector. These are the hard drives. They're, they're small hard drives with the little mini laptop style hard drives, of course, professional grade drives, but the, the, the small laptop size. Uh, if you see anything but these nice blue lights that sometimes will be blinking, um, that you need to let me know that something's going on. And then again, we have our PIB board lights right here, that if we bring this projector out of standby, will start to light up for us. And blue means it's got power. You know, it's got issues, red issues right now, but that'll all resolve here as it boots up. And we also have these lights down here, which are another thing that if we're troubleshooting on the phone, would be good to be able to talk to each other. So IMB Health. The IMB, is, that's synonymous with the IMS. Uh, the only difference between an IMB and an IMS is that an IMB relies on external storage. The IMS has built-in storage. 
Um, so as far as the projector goes, it doesn't really care which it has. So where it says IMB Health, in our case, that's actually referring to our IMS. Uh, the ICE, we have ICP Health, the PIB Health, which uh, the PIB is this part up here. So now that this is all green, our PIB Health light down here has lit up telling us that that's good. Uh, the ICP is another board inside of there that we don't see. Uh, we, we need that to be working well. TPC disconnect, if that light comes on, that tells us that our touchscreen controller up here is not connecting properly and then we have a problem. The light being off is a good thing. It doesn't ever turn green telling us it's good. It only tells us if something's bad. We don't need to worry about these down here because we're not using 3D on this projector. So now let's go back to our NAS. This cord goes down, comes out at this device right down here. This is extra storage. Now, before we put in the IMSs, this was the storage. It's all, it's all we had, at an external storage. So just like on screen five, the drives are built in. On this one, the drives were external to this unit. Now we're back to built-in drives, now that we have the Dolby IMS in there. But this is a, this is a good way to add additional capacity to our storage network. This right here is your eSATA. That's gonna come down here and go to this, where it says CRU racks. Very important, make sure that's turned on. Probably the single most common um, mistake we have with this is it's just not turned on. And then we put our drives in there exactly the same way we did on screen five. We'll press this to eject. The process is exactly the same. Uh, this switch right here, uh, you remember on screen five, we had that device with tons of buttons on it and all we used was the up and down buttons for the lights. That's all this is, up, down, for your auditorium lights. It's that simple. Power strip here, battery backup works exactly the same as five. And then that network switch that was on the, um, on the front of screen five, this, this, does, this serves the same purpose, but it's back here where we can see it a little better. Um, and all of these are going to have this extra cable. That's a, that's a redundancy thing if we have an issue. If, if I ever tell you to plug that in on the phone, then you'll know what to do. But otherwise, it's supposed to be that way, so don't worry about it. And then on screen four, you'll see this cable running through here. That's not on the rest of them. That was a, a bypass surgery that had to be done to, to save the projector from a problem. Um, Hopefully we don't have to do that on any other projectors, but that is something you want to make sure you don't bump or pull on. Just, just let that be. As we come over to the sound rack, pretty much the same thing. We've got our CP750, digital one for the server, digital four for our ads, our monitors up here. This is our building network switch. Uh, screen five, you remember it was down uh, on the front of the projector down at the bottom. This one's over on the sound rack. Uh, ad player is here, and here's our amps. Want to make sure those are on, of course. I didn't show you this on screen five, but uh, we're right up here by the porthole. Uh, this is part of the fire alarm system. You see that uh, little blinking green light slowly blinks. Um, that's uh, part of the fire alarm system. That's what tells the projector to shut down in the event of a fire alarm. We'll cover that in detail in the video on fire alarm recovery. Okay, we're back to the screen on the projectionist computer. The way we're gonna access those servers for screens one through four is to come over here to um, all auditoriums right here. And that's gonna open us up a nice little browser window. And it tabs across the top. We have screen one, screen two, screen three, and screen four. So we can come in here and log in. And this gives us all of our controls for the server. So that'll be all of our playback functions, scheduling, keys, all of that is gonna happen here. In order to access the projector touch screens to control the projector itself, we go to VNC connections, and we have screen one projector, two, three, and four. So we can open up screen four, and here's all of our information there. 
which one thing you'll notice here is we do actually have our uh, status lights that were on the side there. Our PIB status, ICP, IMB, that's all. We get all of our status lights right here on this screen as well. The uh, button up here will bring you over to your alarms. The only thing we have here is just the half-life on the lamp succeeded, just telling us we're more than halfway through the life on the bulb. Uh, if this is red or yellow, it'll tell you there's something you need to come look at. Red is a critical error that will potentially cause the projector to not be able to play a show. Uh, when you do get uh, a red error up here that tells you that the lamp life is exceeded, then you just need to let me know. Um, go ahead and let me know every time you see it. Keep in mind, uh, when I get the notice, I order a bulb. Um, and it'll take a few days for the bulb to get here, and, and then I come in and install it. Um, but uh, don't, don't feel like just because you've seen it before to not notify me. Because what tends to happen sometimes is um, everyone just thinks the last person relayed the information, or maybe I fixed something and then there's an additional problem. Um, but because I was told about the first problem, nobody tells me again because they figure I already know when in reality the problem had been fixed and um, has resurfaced. So always let me know when there's a problem. Just shoot me a simple text um, to let me know what's going on. So in here we have our standby just like on screen 5. We have the buttons, physical buttons on the projector. Here we have our buttons here. This, and all of them are press and hold. You have to press and hold it for just a minute. Uh, well, just a two second hold and it, and it works. So we can strike the lamp here, we can open and close the dowser here, um, we can change our, our lens format. All of this is stuff, other than turn, you know, turning it on, bringing it up out of standby is something that you will do during your startup procedure. Other than that, all of this stuff is going to happen if your cues are all done correctly. But if you ever do have to manually control, this is where you'll do that. Which can be done from this screen, or you can do it from the projector itself on the touch screen. Um, the only way to access the server from the, from the other screens, because there's not a separate monitor, like in screen 5, we have this separate monitor just to control the server. But uh, on the other auditoriums, uh, you do have to go through this interface to control your servers and that can be done either from this projector or you can take a handy dandy projectionist tablet which there is one over by screens one and two um, then the other one is typically going to be down and plugged in down at the counter so you'll, you'll have your access to control your servers from there quick hop over here to screen two um, the only things really different about screens one and two you don't have your switch up here to control your lights. You gotta come back here. So just right up here, you're gonna find, uh, we're right up by the porthole window. You'll see this switch right here, up and down, controls the lights. And then briefly, I'm just gonna show you uh, these tabs right here and here, or how you open up the side. And then, Come back here behind your CRU bay, which you might come up here to figure out which one is our CRU bay. That's where we ingest. You see our eSATA cable right here. That's plugged in tight, that's plugged in tight. And that's what you'll want to do to check and make sure everything's good on your CRU. In addition to making sure that it's turned on right here, that should solve any problems you have getting uh, drives, you know, using drives to ingest content. Only other weird thing about screen two is your ad player is back on your sound rack. Uh, of course, screen four is the same way. Screen five, it's on the desk right up next to the projector. Screens one and three, your ad player is conveniently right here, right on the back of the projector next to your control screen. Uh, the extractor for the ads is always gonna be close to the ad player itself. So if the ad player is by the projector, the extractor will be by the projector. If the ad player is on the sound rack, the extractor will be on the sound rack. And then just keep in mind screen three, there are two extractors, one for the ad player and one for the My Cinema player. So you'll just want to track it and make sure you're, you're working with the right one when you're troubleshooting ads. So that is the end of the two video series on devices.
and how they work together. So stay tuned for additional training videos. Thanks.